Good morning and the warmest welcome to you all to the opening ceremony of Milano 2021, the 92nd international session of the European Youth Parliament. Before starting our conversation, we will begin with a quick video on who we are, why we are here and what we're about. Dear delegates, officials, distinguished speakers and guests, it's for us a pleasure to welcome you all to the first digital session of the European Youth Parliament. I would like to direct your attention to, to the motto, Ref Circular Sustainability, Rethinking Today, Shaping Tomorrow. A motto that sums up what we believe in, a motto that looks at the future without forgetting the present. This is how our journey started an idea, willingness to implement it, and the desire to share it with other people. Three girls gather together with different past stories and experiences to reflect on what sustainability could have meant to us and, for, and to other people, how we could have made it something tangible, yet preserving its ontological complexity. Looking at other people's lives, backgrounds, habits and settings, to make sustainability a truly participatory arena where nobody is left behind. Quite some time passed since the starting point of this path, and we can assure you we learned a lot. However, our enthusiasm, our trust in others are still vivid as it was during the first days. Milano could not have been possible without the people and the trust that they have along with for us. Each one of us is what will define Milano and its meaning in the present and in the future. Do not lack historical memory while you are doing so. Remember that before us, someone believed in a united Europe and in a better world. It's our moment now and responsibility to actively contribute to lead the way forward with passion, humility and strength. Leadership is often seen as something bigger than us, something unreachable and limited to an elite. Reconsider leadership. Let's remake leadership as something that each of us can implement every day in our daily life. A pledge to action and engagement. A person close to my heart once told me, curiosity is the biggest gift that we have. So I invite you all to have curiosity while you are engaging with Milano, to approach the different topics and people with a curiosity to learn more and to have your, your say in what you're doing in, every, in, a, in your everyday life. So take up this possibility and write your own story. We are going to be here along the way to define together a more sustainable, fair and inclusive future without forgetting who came before us and the battles that they fought. It's now my pleasure and honor to uh, welcome to the stage uh, not only a colleague, but what I'm honored to call a friend, Caterina Mucci. Dear delegates, officials, 
distinctive guests and speakers, the greatest of welcomes to you all. Now you are officially part of Milano 2021, the 92nd International Session of the European Youth Parliament. My name is Katerina, and I'm so thrilled to finally welcome you in this project, which is going to become our space to learn about one of the most important topics of our time, sustainability. We have been working almost three years to bring this project to life, and regardless of all the hardships and difficulties, we are proud to be here and to present to you the world, our initiative, which truly will be put in the history books of the association, the first ever digital international session of the European Youth Parliament. By taking part of this project, you are deciding to not only frame the debate, but to be in charge of it. As you know, the theme of the event is circular sustainability, rethinking today, shaping tomorrow, a mission that we cherish and we are excited to share. For us, sustainability means establishing a dialogue with the future, putting on the line citizens across generations to find solutions and innovate the present state of the world towards a more sustainable and equitable paradigm. Sustainability in its grand simplicity means not having to sacrifice tomorrow for an immediate benefit of today. We believe the choice to hold our event digitally is more important in this moment than ever before. We have lived an unusual and hard year to say the least, and this is why the power of our events becomes so crucial. We are here to challenge the status quo, lead by example, expand our knowledge and explore our potential. We have to use our voice both on and offline to build each other up, support each other and combine our skills, competences and determination to build a more sustainable world. We cannot wait for somebody else to do it for us. Now, under normal circumstances, we would have gathered together for this. Yet, there is something fascinating about each of us being in our, or our own community right now, because our communities are the driving force for change. They are where our values and beliefs are manifested and molded into something tangible. With this being said, I am so proud to welcome you to Milano 2021, the 92nd International Session of the European Youth Parliament. It is finally time to enjoy our hard work and achieve change through our project. We are so grateful for your commitment and we are excited to show how 200 young Europeans, one topic and one digital platform can have an impact. It's now my pleasure to introduce you all, a person that uh, saw this, um, this project since the first beginning and uh, trusted us in, in our mission. So with no further ado, I will present you Anja Suprenenko, the Executive Director of the European Youth Parliament. Thank you, Elena, and thanks everyone. And uh, wow, I'm just so lucky to be here today with 200 motivated and engaged participants who all believe in the same cause, and the roof of this cause is European Youth Parliament. And I have an honor to be a director of this organization. And since I know many of you participants are quite new to this program or event or international session, I would like to share with you who we are, what we do, why our work is so important, and why it is so important to welcome all of you today. And to start with, Maybe think of how many events have you attended? I think for most of you, it's two or three. Some of you have been more experienced, uh, but I would like to say that wherever you are on your journey with the EYP, we are so happy to have you here today. Dear participants of Milano International Session, dear guests, dear everyone, let me address you with a few words on behalf of the International, session, international Office of the EYP from the perspective of my daily work around the organization. From the EYP office located at the Schwarzkopf Foundation in Berlin, our 10 people team there works to support the management of the entire EYP network, including these international sessions. Together with the national committees and our international board, the governing body, we strive to maintain and to develop this impressive program, the European Youth Parliament, which has existed for almost 35 years. And since most of you, it's your second event or third, let me just remind you about some of our pillars. EYP is first a platform for personal development. It's a platform for intercultural encounters and it's an open forum for ideas and exchange. And all of it is entirely 
delivered and led by young people and volunteer driven. And who am I? I turned my passion into a profession. I joined EYP myself in Kyiv 2007, and it was a transformative experience. And since June 2020, I'm the executive director of this organization. And today, I would like to share a few thoughts on why I think that EYP has an important role to play in today's society and how you can continue to be a part of the EYP success story. Why EYP? The European Youth Parliament is an educational program that brings together young people to debate the pressing issues of our time. Our mission is to inspire and empower young Europeans to be open-minded, tolerant and active citizens. Dear delegates, I want to tell you a little bit more about the organization that you are now part of. As you maybe know, EVP is active in almost all of Europe. We are a program that seeks to reach young people in all European countries, West and East, North and South, in the EU and outside of the EU. Here at this session, we have 36 countries present out of 40 from the network. And thank you the Milano team who brought all of you together in this digital space. Last year, Europe faced a great health danger, but also a danger of keeping people apart from each other. Something that we felt in EYP, which is built on the concept of bringing together young people and intercultural encounters. Pandemic is impacting on the rights of young people and their well-being. Recent statistics confirm that the level of anxiety, depression, mental health problems have significantly increased in this past year. The survey found that globally one in two of young people are possibly subject to anxiety and depression, while a further 17% are probably affected by it. Our work is even more important than ever. That is why so, I'm so proud that despite all the challenges, we managed to transform our sessions into the digital space. Last year alone, we provided almost 15,000 of participants through the 300 events we organized throughout Europe to participate in our activities. And it was so overwhelming to receive all the feedback. Joining EVP gave our participants hope. And I'm sure this session, as Katerina said, it's a flagship event, the very first one. In the digital space, it will give also all of you this hope. EVP doesn't stop with EVP, but our, one of our ultimate goals is to motivate and inspire you to step outside and to be actively involved in society. We are very proud to be one of the leading youth organizations in this massive citizen engagement action around the Conference on the Future of Europe, a process we firmly hope will put citizens' needs and expectations in its main focus. The future is yours to shape, and I can only invite you also to participate in our poll on the future of Europe, and we are very proud that European Parliament enables us to give space and forum to you. The EVP is a bottom-up youth network. Our activities are organized by young people for young people. Over 30,000 of volunteers in a normal year are involved in our activities on a yearly basis. They're the real heroes of our network. There might be different reasons why you are here. I would just name a couple. Maybe you are looking for new friends. Maybe you would like to change your country. Maybe you are just here to develop skills and to pursue your personal development. Whatever brings you here, we are so glad and Europe needs you and so many opportunities to make change. I would like to share just a few specific ways how you can get involved with us in the EYP. We have a few participants also here among delegates who are already organizing events. For example, I know that Elona from Kosovo is here and she is already a board member and she joined us last year. You could join one of these events across Europe to broaden your horizons or you could just pursue an active citizenship process also as our dear project, project managers outlined along the lines of sustainability. But today, let me end by thanking all of you who are contributing to this event. I would like to especially thank the team of organizers who have worked tirelessly to make this 10 days a special experience. I wish to thank you for upholding, for managing, for developing EYP so that it can be really such a driver for learning and positive development on a personal and societal level. Elena, Katerina, also Rebecca, you've demonstrated resilient leadership, adapting, delivering, and still keeping the team going. I'm so impressed by your positive mindset and how you looked at everything as, a, as an opportunity. 
I would also thank Jeron and Lucas for embarking on this journey and leading your media team with so much enthusiasm. We take this chance to celebrate them as role models and icebreakers. So if you could also just all clap, uh, whoever is in front of your screens, that's all the virtual applaud to you. This event would not be possible without the help of our generous partners and supporters. We want to thank all of our partners, among them the European Parliament and Leonardo, Microsoft Italy, Sparkas, the Boston Consulting Group, who are represented here today for their generous support and help. Finally, thank you, dear participants, for coming here and for leaving the UAP spirit of collaboration, open-mindedness and friendship. UAP gives you an extraordinary chance to discuss the various topics with your fellow Europeans and to learn from each other and to better understand the different perspectives to the challenging questions of our time. As young European citizens, I urge you to be visionary and to use this chance to give Europe a little push forward to a better future. I now wish you a very successful international session and a, very, and a few very inspiring days of dialogue. I hope you consider getting involved in UAP or outside of the UAP. There are numerous opportunities and we depend on your help to uphold a lively culture of participation. Thank you. Now, before moving on, we want to share with you delegates, officials and distinctive guests a short video message we received from a very special leader, the president of the European Commission, Ursula von der Leyen. Dear members of the European Youth Parliament, thank you for this opportunity to address thousands of committed young people from all across Europe. I am particularly honoured to be a patron of the European Youth Parliament. When I proposed the European Green Deal in my political guidelines, I was inspired precisely by young people like you. Your generation makes me hopeful about Europe and our future. Sometimes I have the impression that you are collectively much wiser than prior generations. This is definitely true when it comes to climate action. You are the generation climate strike. Many of you choose local organic food. You take the bike or public transport. You demand more green in your cities, rightly so. On social media, as well as in your communities, you are not just raising awareness, but also leading action against climate change, walking a talk. It is great that you have chosen circular sustainability as the focus of your session. This is indeed the core of the European Green Deal. Circular sustainability has to do, for instance, with stopping single-use plastics, with restoring forests, but also with smartphones in our pockets. They are packed with precious raw materials extracted at a very high cost for our planet and they get thrown away after just a few years. The European Green Deal wants to address all of this. It is a shift from a throwaway culture towards circular sustainability. This cultural shift is even more important in times of the pandemic. Circular sustainability must be the compass of our recovery plans. Let me explain why I think this is the case. The European Union has just put together a very large stimulus package worth 750 billion euros. On the one hand, we will finance urgent social measures such as the youth guarantee. Our goal is that all Europeans under the age of 30 who come out of education or lose their job can get a new opportunity within four months. On the other hand, we must fast forward the green transition. With the resources from our recovery plan, we can invest in innovative energy sources, such as clean hydrogen or transform mobility and public transport in our cities. This is a unique opportunity to rethink today and shape tomorrow. Our recovery plan is called Next Generation EU. With it, 
We want to make Europe a better place for the next generation. A place you can be proud of and where you can bring your own contribution. So I look forward to hearing about the conclusions of your session. We need your engagement. We need to hear your voice, especially as European countries are drafting their national recovery plans. The motto of this session is extraordinary circumstances call for extraordinary commitment. That is so true. This is your generation's moment and we're all acting for the future of our European Union. Thank you. And let me wish you all the best for this European Youth Parliament's new session. I'm now passing the word to Anait, one of the media team members of the session that will introduce the next activity. Good morning, everybody. I am Anait from the media team and we have a little activity for you today. We have created a sustainability tracker which will allow us to observe how your perception on sustainability evolves throughout the session. So now uh, we would like to ask you to follow the link in the chat of the general channel in the general team and submit your answer to one question. What does sustainability mean to you? Thank you for your attention and please submit your answers now. So all of this would have not been possible without the incredible network of humans that stood by our side. Starting from listening to our first elevator pitches of the Milano International Session all the way to supporting us through this groundbreaking digital transformation. The sponsors that I'm hereby to present have been involved in the session by supporting us not only financially but also humanly through trainings, contents and valuable expertise all elements that have allowed us to grow as a team and strengthen our mission. They believed in this project and in the goals we set ourselves to achieve, demonstrating the power and importance of intergenerational dialogue. To this extent, I, it is my honor to present Rebecca, the president of the session, who will be moderating the panel with Alessandro Profumo, CEO of Leonardo, Silvia Candiani, CEO of Microsoft Italy, and Giuseppe Falco, CEO of BCG Italy, Greece, Turkey, and Israel. Thank you, Caterina. Um, it's my great pleasure to be here with you today. You'll hear from me at the end of the ceremony, but for now, it's my pleasure to discuss with three of our main partners. So we have two rounds of questions for this panel debate. The first one is from our speakers to us. So I'm asking them what they would like to share with us about sustainability. And the second one is from them, uh, is from us towards them. So what they would like us to share with them about sustainability. And we're kicking off with Alessandro Profumo. And so the first question is, what do you think is the main challenge or obstacle to sustainability that you're facing in your company and that you think we should better understand? Mute. <coughs> do you hear me? So, yes. Good. Uh, first of all, I'd like to start uh, really thanking uh, Katerina and Elena uh, since uh, I met them uh, the first time two years ago. Uh, the world is changing in the meanwhile, and uh, uh, they have been really incredibly intelligent, humble, flexible, uh, uh, courageous, uh, uh, enthusiastic uh, in uh, shaping uh, this uh, session in the right way. Uh, this is a type of leader I'd like to have in my companies. Uh, so is, uh, I'd like to thank them. Uh, having said that, uh, a few words on uh, what is uh, uh, sustainability for Leonard and what, uh, what, which have been the main challenges. Uh, we had. The first challenge has been uh, to change uh, our culture uh, in the sense that uh, in many cases, sustainability was considered as something uh, uh, in uh, competition uh, with uh, uh, competitiveness. Uh, um, 
Today, luckily enough, uh, in our company, we are fully convinced that uh, uh, competitiveness and sustainability are one without the other cannot uh, be there. And uh, uh, this uh, cultural change uh, has been uh, uh, incredibly important. Uh, um, uh, it's also relevant to say that uh, today, more and more, uh, is clear that uh, uh, the long term uh, uh, on uh, what we do is uh, the uh, way in order uh, to be valued also by our investors. Uh, a few days ago, and I, I suggest uh, to have a look, is that Bank of America made a research on uh, Boeing. Uh, uh, talking exactly on uh, uh, the concept of um, ESG as a value creator. As you know, Boeing had a major problem in, uh, in some problems, mainly because uh, the culture of cost cutting uh, was uh, dominating the culture of uh, uh, doing the best uh, in terms of uh, uh, products. Uh, they were the culture of products uh, in engineering. So I think that. This is very uh, relevant. In this perspective, uh, we have done a lot as well in terms of reporting. Uh, this year we made uh, the first uh, uh, integrated report. Uh, so we are not uh, reporting anymore uh, the uh, sustainability results in a separate way, but uh, are really uh, interlinked one with the other. And they'll give you an, an idea on uh, which are uh, some of the indicators on which, uh, for instance, and now uh, 30 in the company. Today, we are uh, uh, more or less 10% of the total, which is a lot because we are 50,000, so it means uh, 5,000 people. 17% uh, of our uh, managers are female, is a too low number. Uh, we have a target uh, in order to increase uh, this number. This is uh, important, is incredibly important. Uh, we uh, are measuring ourselves uh, on uh, the number of injuries uh, we have uh, per million hours, and uh, this uh, indicator of 2.6 uh, accidents uh, uh, per million hours work. Uh, so we are, or uh, we are considering energy consumption on Revit, um, which uh, decreased by 3.3% uh, year on year, or uh, we are also working on uh, uh, water withdrawals uh, on revenues uh, or waste produced on revenues. So we are really uh, considering all uh, these elements. We are reporting officially. We have a very clear target. So all the companies focus on uh, in achieving these targets. And this is incredibly good uh, because, uh, uh, again, uh, at the beginning, many of my people were convinced that this uh, should be an extra cost. Today they know that this is an extra saving uh, uh, because it is really a way to work better. Um, so uh, this uh, cultural change that we have realized uh, is uh, uh, the main uh, uh, focus for us and was uh, the main constraints in order to have a sustainable uh, company. Then clearly we have to look to the future as well. Eh? So uh, to talk of uh, the convergence uh, of uh, industry and uh, new technologies, mainly digital technologies, uh, is uh, uh, another uh, incredibly relevant uh, element in order to be sustainable uh, in the long run. Uh. Um, and uh, we are working a lot in order to understand how uh, the digital technologies, uh, artificial intelligence, big data, cloud, uh, uh, simulation, uh, 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 augmented reality and so on and so forth uh, are creator of values and non, not uh, uh, the strong of uh, labor uh, positions. So is, uh, <coughs> this is uh, again uh, uh, David element um, uh, for all of us uh, uh, is a, a new way uh, of working. Uh, uh, so and for us uh, is uh, what we call uh, sustainability. So in a short, uh, in short terms, uh, sustainability for us is uh, really a way to live, a way to manage the company. It's not uh, uh, the onion cover that you put uh, outside of your company uh, and uh, um, not uh, changing your way of living. So uh, 
this uh, is uh, what is for us sustainability is mainly a cultural change uh, and i'm sure that uh, with the freshness you have uh, you can help us a lot in doing so thank you thank you for telling us about this cultural change i think it's really um encouraging to hear that it's happening also, I think um, what you said about integrating sustainability with uh, the rest of the reporting, I think symbolically that's also really important in showing that it can't be separated from the strategy. And as you talked about the future and digital, digital technology, I think that's a great transition to our next speaker. So my next question goes to Silvia Candiani, and it's about the role of technology in sustainability. So some argue that we can reach sustainability objectives thanks to technology, others that it's not a silver, a silver bullet. So what do you think is the role that digitalization can have and what are the main challenges to watch out for? Thank you and uh, it's great to be with you. It's a, a very energizing way to um, to start uh, to start a Saturday to hear um, about you know your uh, your commitment to help solve uh, the issues that uh, we have as Europeans. So back to the question on the digital. I think digital is key to achieve um, um, sustainability goals. And uh, even in the discussion of uh, the next generation EU plan, um, also the minister Cingolani uh, highlighted how digital is weaved in in every initiative to reach the success. Um, I think uh, it is key in um, at least uh, three possible way. The first one is measurement, uh, and I'll um, come back to them uh, in, a, in a bit more. Um, the second is uh, energy uh, savings, and the third one is a circular economy and um, uh, waste management. So the first one is measurement, and I couldn't agree more uh, with uh, Alessandro Profumo because I think it all starts by having a clear assessment of where a company is, where it wants to be, and then to track the progress. Uh, in the end, every company is used to really operate in a very um, precise way about, around achieving targets. And when this becomes within in the culture a priority and we have targets we work against, then it becomes uh, practical and uh, um, we have more chance to really make progress. Um, and so the first challenge we have is really to measure where we are, for example, in terms of the CO2 emissions and how can we uh, progress uh, to reduce uh, this um, impact uh, on, uh, on the environment around us. Um, and uh, I saw a, a survey of, um, um, the, for example, for Italian companies uh, on how they drafted their uh, most recent uh, statements, uh, uh, financial statements, and only 30% had um, real targets on how they are going, uh, um, what they are going to achieve in terms of better sustainability and how they're going to do it. So the rest just had a list of initiatives, but without a specific measurement, um, um, which uh, gives uh, less uh, confidence in their ability to really make progress around those targets. And so, for example, one thing that digital can do is uh, can uh, help you to assess uh, your um, impact. And there are some solutions on issue. For example, we give it, uh, an opportunity to uh, measure um, how much uh, CO2 you are consuming with your IT uh, infrastructure. And, and you have uh, a way to understand how much um, you can optimize it, for example, by moving more to the cloud or to, um, to uh, optimizing uh, uh, different indicators. And there are many other digital solutions. So for example, there is an ecosystem of partners that really help you to um, measure not just uh, the IT part, but also all the other elements of uh, the um, uh, sustainability roadmap. Um, so the first one would be measurement. The second one, which I think is very interesting, is uh, uh, the whole topic of energy saving. Um, it starts, of course, with a smart grid, uh, but uh, more in general, it's about uh, finding efficient uh, solutions, for example, to reduce uh, um, the, the, uh, the cost and and back to the point, it's not just uh, the impact, but also has positive impact in terms of uh, efficiency, the, the energy consumption in your plant, or how to uh, optimize the mix between uh, green uh, and uh, non-green energy sources. And for example, we um, launched a, a solution with Vattenfall. It's a big um, 
uh, uh, Swedish uh, uh, provider of energy by which we uh, give uh, a possibility to um, customers to measure, measure how much uh, uh, green energy they are consuming and uh, um, they uh, can optimize uh, then the, the mix between green energy and non-green energy, and actually they're also able to um, report it in their own activities with the customers. So um, the, the one element really where uh, digital is key to energy efficiency is that it can allow to better match demand uh, and supply of uh, green energy, and therefore to make the market Market more efficient and be able to increase the mix um, also for the um, for the users and also it helps to track it so that uh, companies and consumers uh, together they they can uh, be aware of uh, uh, how much green energy they're using and how they could uh, optimize it to use it even more and the third one uh, the third area that i wanted to mention is um, uh, waste and circularity in a sense uh, the opportunity is really to uh, able to make all the uh, optimization in order to reduce waste let's think for example of uh, uh, iot and artificial intelligence applied to a plant and so you can try to optimize the mix of uh, components and optimize the supply chain in order to reduce waste during the uh, production and that uh, allows to reduce cost and also to uh, reduce uh, uh, waste, in fact. Um, we do the same, um, we apply the same, for example, to our own data centers, so where we uh, use the AI to um, uh, prolong the life of our service and therefore be uh, in a situation where we don't have to um, throw them away and uh, invest in new ones that, that quickly. And that is a proof of how, uh, you know, the reduction of uh, waste and economic impact but uh, they can uh, work together. And there are so many other situations in every component, in every industry where we can find ways together with the sensor, digital, artificial intelligence to optimize uh, current processes in order to reduce uh, um, the impact on the environment and at the same time also achieve uh, better cost, uh, better cost results. So um, back to the point, really sustainability is uh, emission. Digital can help uh, to measure um, and to uh, track progress against uh, these uh, uh, targets. And uh, um, there are many opportunities to also have sustainability uh, with uh, a positive economic impact as well. Thank you very much for sharing these um, th these thoughts with us and all these different concrete examples of how digitalization can help with having a lower uh, environmental impact. And um, I think the the first main two points really highlighted how if you care about something, you have to measure it. And that's definitely a big step forward. Uh, I completely agree about what you said on targets, how for a while we've heard a lot of people make big commitments. And it's I think we're on a different step now with concrete targets that can be measured, that can be followed. Um, to hold to hold um, uh, people and organizations accountable. So for the the final question of this first round, um, we'll turn to Giuseppe Falco. And here it's generally, um, as BCG, you work with many stakeholders and you support them in facing complex problems in transitioning to more sustainability. And so in all your interactions with all these different stakeholders, what are some key elements that you think um, we need to understand about sustainability? And in particular, what I'm really curious about is, are there any misconceptions um, that you've encountered and that you think we should be aware of? Good morning, everyone. Uh, first of all, let me, let me start to say that I'm particularly honored to be, to be here with you today. And thank you, and thank you again for what you are doing for all of us. Uh, for the future generation, I'm a father of three kids, so for me it's a very important topic here and for the planet. Um, uh, let me say this year, it's a, I would say symbolically speaking, it's a special year from my perspective, because uh, first of all, after the COVID, which has changed a lot, and by the way, unfortunately, as uh, some ways slowing down the pressure towards uh, climate and sustainability, but hopefully we are going to start up again. 
but also uh, for you know for many um, events that are uh, already uh, planned like COP 2021 20, 26 in Glasgow but also let me say more importantly some very strong signal coming from the US during the third day I mean, a few days ago I mean Biden organized uh, big events and essentially from a symbolic perspective this means having US back again into into the game which is and by the way in, in in last minutes we also get they also get collaboration from China so some way uh, we are back again this year to the to the to the serious discussion around sustainability and climate um, back to your question I mean I think from what we are observing it's the real big news is the uh, emerging role of companies and businesses um, I would say, uh, you know, starting from the letters that the 300 top managers has, uh, you know, sent to Biden a few days ago, where the top US companies simply asked Biden to set ab aggressive targets. But also in general, if I look at many companies we are, you know, collaborating with, uh, you know, towards uh, COVID uh, exit strategy recovery, uh, you know, the, the sustainability and climate is one of the top agenda in every company. And this is a very big important news. I hope, I mean, my personal hope is that, you know, business and government will uh, enhance the collaboration. I mean, just to give an example, we experience with the vaccine production a very, a very vir virtual and you know evident example of collaboration in very few months we were able to thanks to the collaboration of government and businesses we were able to produce vaccines in every part of the world and now we are you know setting up a kind of inclusive production and deployments so this is i think a very clear example of how collaboration between business and and government uh, can can impact and to be honest, uh, I see we saw lots of energy into the business and to the companies. We are, you know, seeing here Alessandro and Silvia just mentioned two examples of a very, very important company. So I think all the energy that we observe in companies should be leveraged more and more by government, because at the end of the story, government set uh, the context. Company are very uh, the game. Uh, they are the game changers in the different supply chain. Um, I think you're right. The question on misconception is very important because uh, uh, typically, uh, you know, climate uh, or sustainability is considered some way a problem. Um, but probably there are many uh, important misconceptions here. I mean, some some of them has been has been uh, already mentioned. Let me just give you a couple of examples from uh, from my perspective, for example, we talked about cost. OK, so actually sustainability could be considered a cost, but you know, the cost is really affordable. We have done a study for the, we, together with the World Economic Forum where we have, an, we have analyzed eight supply chains. So from, from, from the beginning to the end, not only the production of the final product, but also the, you know, the scope too, but uh, you know raw materials and so on and so forth. And what you know the, the output is very clear. The cost on consumer for making products at zero uh, net zero is very affordable and very low. So just to give to to example, you know a net zero shirt will cost one dollar more than a normal shirt, and a net zero car will cost about 1.6% uh, than uh, a traditional car. So this is to say, uh, I mean, typically we consider this as a cost because we normally focus on one part of the value chain. But if we look at the holistic view, probably the cost is really affordable. Um, a second example is the speed. I mean, normally we consider the sustainability change, the climate change, the transition and so on and so forth, a long term discussion. So we know that there are targets in 2050, 2030, but the, actually the, the world's consumers are, you know, going much faster than what we think. Just to give one example, uh, last year, 2020, electric car market share grew up from 8 to 12 percent, OK, in one year. 
and this year 2021 is uh, is already the trend is already the same so we have done a, a study a few years ago and we were wrong because we we planned uh, into uh, 2030 this the market share that we are discussing now so at the end of the story again this is not a long term story this is a very short term story so everything the world is changing consumers are changing mindset and so on and so forth um, I think that third, the third misconception is about scoping. I already mentioned here, I mean, scoping, uh, sometimes we think about CO2 emission as the, of course, most important ultimate uh, target. But sustainability is a more broad and holistic perspective. We, we need to think about the role of biodiversity, the role of the planet, uh, you know, the different environment in the planet, the role of the impact of, for example, in the water or producing medicine and drugs and so on and so forth. So it's it's more than just uh, energy consumption or in, in, in my own country, in my own business. It's it's more about holistically uh, speaking. So uh, and last but not least, uh, um, the concept of, of uh, why I should invest in uh, as a company in, uh, in, uh, in sustainability. I mean, um, again, it should be considered like an R&D investment because at the end of the story, R&D produce uh, values in the long term. You don't see the effect in the immediate short term and the value that you can generate. I mean, of course, on top of the overall global and planet sustainability and society, there is also a very concrete uh, uh, value generation for uh, stakeholders, but also shareholders of businesses. So we're thinking about uh, equity value, for example, in the long term. I mean, we uh, we, we know already how financial institutions are considering and, and rating uh, the, the um, you know, companies in, in this in this perspective. It's about access to finance, for example. It's about consumer premium. Um, it's about resilience of the business, but, but also, let me say, like, it's about employer branding. So companies investing in sustainability today will be the most attractive employer for the future. So sustainability, it's an R&D investment. It's not just reducing cost, saving the planet. It's really also in the interest of shareholders and companies. So again, this is for me uh, the, the concept of uh, probably sometime looking at sustainability in the wrong, uh, in the wrong way. Thank you for sharing all these thoughts and I think it illustrates very well all the different ways in which this cultural change is happening, um, especially what you said about how it was seen as a cost and actually we shouldn't see it as a cost, uh, but we're more as an investment and also I think something that's unavoidable in a way. And what I also find really interesting is this element of time. And I think this last year with the COVID crisis has also given us a new perspective on time, how at the same time things seem to be changing so fast and at the same time being exactly the same as a year ago. So I think that's a really interesting element. Um, also, I took a little peek at the first answers that you were all giving on uh, other participants submitted on what they think sustainability is. And a lot of the answers have to do with the future long term. So I think it's really important for us to remember that it's not just long term, it's also things happening now. And now is really critical. And so now we're ready to move on to the second round. Um, so when now that we've heard from what you wanted to share with us, I wanted to ask you what you wanted us to share with you. So all these questions are kind of your questions for us that you want us to think about and discuss and make our proposals in the next eight days. Um, so we begin again with Alessandro Profumo. What do you believe is the power of youth? What impact do you believe we can have through this international session? So first of all, I think that young people uh, uh, do have a strength uh, which is uh, mainly your belief uh, in uh, your ideas uh, uh, with extraordinary dedication to your projects. Um, uh, unfortunately, when uh, you become older, you are uh, less energetic uh, and uh, up to certain extent uh, uh, maybe uh, slightly cynical. So I think that uh, really uh, this trend is uh, 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 key and in my opinion what is incredibly important that you in, in some cases I'm seeing some shyness uh, or sense of awe uh, that you have uh, and uh, you you must uh, overcome that uh, really you have to shake us we need you uh, because uh, uh, 
your energy is uh, fundamental also uh, in order to uh, oblige us uh, to continue to dream uh, unless uh, uh, we lose uh, something so i think that this is uh, really incredibly important uh, um, in my opinion uh, from uh, what I, i'm seeing from you and but for other young people i'm uh, uh, maybe you have uh, a preparation uh, a, a capability in terms of uh, um, empathy and uh, sensitivity uh, or capacity for intercultural dialogue uh, which is also based on uh, 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 the uh, greater access uh, you have to globalization and uh, to media, uh, which is really uh, an incredible important base. Huh? Um, so we were more domestic, we were uh, uh, more uh, close uh, in uh, uh, a small world. Huh? And this is another strength uh, which is important. Uh, you are a clear example. Uh, you go by far beyond uh, the European Union uh, borders. Huh? Um, and uh, uh, you are building bridges that will remain forever. So I think that this is uh, important. Again, uh, this is a value for us, uh, the older generation. So uh, I think it's, uh, it's really um, the key element. Having said that, today we had uh, an incredible opportunity with uh, the <coughs> next generation EU as uh, President uh, von der Leyen just, uh, just said, because uh, <coughs> I think that today we have uh, the possibility of plan instead of reacting. Um, and again, you must you must uh, uh, keep your voice uh, aloud uh, in order to be listened by us. Um, so is uh, uh, and and this is uh, uh, again uh, uh, very important. I'm very confident. Uh, as I said, also this day is an example of uh, what you can do. Uh, 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 and you can be sure that uh, as a personal level, but uh, as company as well, we will continue to be next to you. I think it's also in, it's not the case that today you have uh, three people that uh, know each other, but are also friends, uh, Silvia, Giuseppe, which are next to you. Uh, I think it's not, uh, it's not the case. So uh, for sure, uh, um, you can uh, and you add to uh, to shake us uh, in a positive way, and I'm sure that you will do so. Thank you so much. That is indeed why we're here to share energy and uh, and hopefully shake you, not just you, but uh, more people beyond. And so next, we'll hear from Silvia Candiani. Um, so, what are some key questions that you are facing in Microsoft and also beyond that you think youth should take an active role in answering? Thank you, thank you, Rebecca. Um, yes, I would echo what uh, Alessandro said. So, um, we uh, we need uh, your energy and your point of view, and I think that uh, probably up to uh, last year, the youth point of view was uh, less heard, and I think. Uh, now with the opportunity of next generation EU, it's really uh, a moment in time in which we can plan for the you know 20 years to come and your voice needs to be heard. I think the topics uh, are really um, the ones of uh, um, uh, that we have planned for the uh, next generation EU. So we talk about the future of education and skills, uh, um, how to leverage digital and how to grow digital uh, um, uh, in tech intensity in the society, in the, in the production system. And also we talk about sustainability. So I actually believe that the paradigm of open innovation is key. And so I think we get to better solutions when we put together uh, people that are maybe experts of an industry who've been long in uh, some topics uh, um, together with maybe uh, startups uh, and uh, uh, young people out of university and researchers from university because bringing different points of views together to solve a common problem, I think that's uh, what is most powerful. So I think there exists dialogue and uh, 
um, uh, collaboration against the common objective is what is going to drive us forward. In terms of, um, and that's really methodology that you master and that you have been experimenting with your working group. So bringing in experts uh, from uh, also the specific fields uh, and working together and collaborating a solution, I think that's what uh, is going to bring us forward. In terms of uh, on what topics, I would uh, take the ones that are, you know, um, set down by the next generation EU because they are the, you know, uh, hottest topics. I mean, even within, uh, um, for example, the, 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 the biggest chapters of investment. Um, for example, in Italy, we have, uh, you know, the future of circular economy, how to make it uh, uh, more effective in different fields or, you know, um, um, intelligent mobility to make it more efficient. So I would pick one of those uh, and I think they are new topics and where uh, interdisciplinary uh, work and collaboration is going to be key uh, to find new solutions. Thank you very much. Um, and indeed, it, it's really encouraging to hear uh, to hear all this because indeed it is how we work. It is what we're aiming to do during these eight days. It is our methodology and what we're what we're learning in this organization is this this collaboration and, and working together. Um, and so finally, for the very last question of our debate, uh, we turn to Giuseppe Falco. Um, on what issues do you think we need some fresh thinking? Over what questions should youth take ownership and propose their own view and solutions? Yeah, let, let me say, I, I, I think uh, the ownership uh, uh, can be split in three different dimensions, of course, uh, uh, converging together. I mean, one, you are a consumer. So how to change the consumer paradigm? It's a priority for you. Uh, walk the talk. Uh, it's and how to, uh, let me say, interpret personally the way you consume uh, is very important because uh, young generation are the target of companies and government in see and capture consumer behaviors, consumer attitude, consumer needs. So the more you change and the more you, let me say, interpret the new paradigm, the more the words, you know, follow you. So this is a kind of a, very important duty, but also responsibility that you have as a youth generation. The second dimension is employee or future leaders. You know, be an employee. I mean, you are the future talent. Uh, business are looking at you uh, in, in order to grow, in order to, you know, to explain their role and so on and so forth. So you have the power to select where to work for. You have the power to influence. Uh, your employee, um, uh, your employer, and I'm sure as a future leaders within companies, you have the power to change the way companies interpret the world. The third dimension for me, it's, it's you are a citizen. So uh, foster boldly the discussion. Um, so institutional business uh, should feel the urge to act. So as a citizen, the power is very strong. I mean, again, as for company, young generation are considered the future of the, for politicians, for institutions. And so you should foster the discussion. And again, in a very clear and loudly way, uh, we saw different examples how, you know, young generation or even young person, single individual can foster the discussion. So for me, consumer, employee and leader and citizen. This is the way, uh, you, you know, your ownership should 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 act. Thank you so much. Um, so this wraps up our panel debate. I wanted to thank all three of you again, not only for your support of us um, in the last few months um, and allowing us to make this happen, but also for these words that you've shared with us. Uh, it's very um, it's, it's very encouraging, very empowering. Um, what I take out of this is that we're in a culture change, um, sustainability is taking over, and that we have a big role to play in this. And I also want to thank you because if we can also have a big role, it's also because other generations are more willing to, to listen to us and give us that space. Um, so thank you again, and uh, now we'll move on to the, to the rest of the ceremony. Thank you. Many thanks to all of you. We we'll follow Thank you. you.
Thank you, Rebecca, and to Alessandro Profumo, Silvia Candiani, Giuseppe Falco for this insightful conversation. It is now my pleasure to introduce Dr. Carl Peter Schachmann Fallis, Executive Member of the Board of the German Savings Banks Association, one of European Youth Parliament's network's long term partners. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the German Savings Banks, it is my pleasure to welcome you to this 92nd session of the European Youth Parliament. Unfortunately, the ongoing pandemic is preventing me from welcoming you in person in Milano right now. However, thanks to the many volunteers behind this important project, you are not missing out on the collaboration and political debate that are at the heart of every EYP session. In this sense, you're getting the same genuine experience that has unfortunately become so emblematic of politics and parliamentary proceedings in these difficult times. I would like to mention by name the following volunteers as representative of the many young people who have made this session of the EYP possible. Elena Maro and Katerina Mucci, Rebecca Smith, Jeroen Blom and Lukas Ichtelstöger. I am grateful to all of you for your energy and commitment to this project, a project of unity, diversity and peace. The world is going through a crisis that is causing a tragic number of deaths. Economic activity and welfare have been impacted dramatically. The EU's GDP shrank by 7.1% last year. If we can learn anything from this pandemic, it is the importance of acting decisively when confronted with imminent crisis. Over the past 14 months, there have been many reassuring instances of such crisis action. One example is a 750 billion euro next gen EU package. Instead of fragmented fiscal policy responses by individual member states, this is a truly European achievement. Another example is the banking union, one of the biggest EU reform projects. It has enabled supervisors and co-legislators to act early on in the crisis with numerous quick fixes. But there is also growing dissent across Europe regarding the handling of the pandemic. The World Health Organization has described the EU vaccine rollout as unacceptably low. And indeed, the shortfall compared with other jurisdictions cannot be ignored. These experiences must serve as lessons learned, lessons not to ever again be complacent or negligent in the face of crisis. Yet, as terrible as the ongoing pandemic is, in just a few decades, we might find ourselves facing another global crisis with an even bigger impact, climate change. According to the International Energy Agency, global CO2 emissions fell by 5.8% in 2020. This is roughly equivalent to the EU's share of the world's carbon emissions. Please consider for a moment what it has taken to achieve this. We have reduced car traffic, air travel, social life and economic activity to an unprecedented extent. The EU's Green Deal aims to reduce emissions by 55% compared with 1990 levels over the next nine years. Yet, it took an almost complete shutdown to achieve just 5.8% reduction. That should really give us a sense of the sheer magnitude needed to really make a difference. I therefore fully support that you have chosen this topic 
for your 92nd EYP session, dedicating no fewer than 11 committee sessions to debating sustainability and its implications. All over the world, social groups, particularly young people like you, are pushing for the principle of sustainability to become reality. Many people regard the financial sector as an important potential driver of this huge transformation process. The EU taxonomy for sustainable activities is the most important EU-level project for sustainable finance. Together with other parts of the European Green Deal, it aims to massively divert financial flows into sustainable activities and establish sustainability criteria more securely in financial institutions risk management. We are determined to contribute to these objectives. But in some ways, it is a roundabout approach to try to influence lifestyles and investment through external financial regulation. <clears throat> in economic terms, it would probably make more sense to impose specific requirements on households and companies. For example, since 1990, virtually no CO2 reductions have been achieved in Germany in the field of transport. Putting a price on environmental impact, for example, by charging for CO2 emissions, is more likely to achieve climate protection than a highly bureaucratic assessment system based on an EU taxonomy. We are currently experiencing a fundamental change in customers' demands in the field of investment and finance. For many institutional investors, such as foundations and pension funds, economic, social and ecological sustainability criteria are growing in relevance. On the basis of the United Nations principles for responsible banking, we have developed Target Vision 2025. This describes the strategic basis for a sustainable orientation of saving banks and lays down specific targets. So far, more than half of our member institutions have signed up to our climate protection commitment and agreed to adhere to the Paris climate goals and support ecological change. By 2035, 15 years ahead of the deadline laid down in the Green Deal, we aim for our internal business operations to be fully carbon neutral. This brings us to a wider definition of sustainability. The idea of saving banks was born more than 200 years ago and was based on the socio-political idea that every individual, irrespective of their background and social position, should have the right to make provisions for old age and poverty. The society that is cohesive, the society in which we can all participate, that is what savings banks stand for. For us, the ongoing renewal and expansion of this idea is one of today's most crucial tasks. In 2020, the savings banks have spent 363 million euros on supporting projects in the fields of art, culture, sport, social affairs, education, science and the environment. This fits with our latest plant campaign under the slogan because it's about more than money, Barker said. We do this because we wish to create a world that is not just worth living in for current generations, but for later ones as well. This mission is what motivates us to support the European idea and the Schwarzkopf Foundation in particular. Our support for the EYP is an important part of this idea. Ladies and gentlemen, I am quite sure you will intensively debate the challenging topic 
of sustainability in your many committee sessions. And you would certainly come up with plenty of helpful and creative ideas to bring us closer to our goals. One of Europe's great founding fathers and the first prime minister of the Italian Republic, Alcide Di Gasperi, once said, a politician looks to the next election, a statesman looks to the next generation. I think this would be a very fitting motto for every meeting of the Euro European Youth Parliament. But it applies in particular to this current session. And I have no doubt the Gasperi would have endorsed it. I hope you have a lively and engaging 92nd session of the European Parliament. Thank you very much. I would like to take uh, the chance to th thank one more all the sponsors that supported us in, uh, in this way. It was not just a technical support, but most of all, a human one. And thank you for reminding us of the importance of what we are doing. We're eager to learn. We are going to approach the matter with humility, but still with passion, enthusiasm and curiosity to make a change in the world. With no further ado, to, it's my pleasure to introduce you, Lucas and uh, Jeroen, the editors of the International Session of Milano. Okay, thank you very much, Elena. Jeroen? Uh, thank you, Elena. Thank you, Lucas. I'm going to talk real quick because we're both basically both the same mind, so having us both speak is uh, a little unnecessary, but uh, welcome to all the delegates, participants, sponsors, honors, honors guests. Um, I, we, our entire team is so excited to start this event with you. We're excited to share our uh, team's projects with you and have you engage with them. Um, and just to meet you at the session, I'm going to hand it to Lucas now because he, he's going to deliver the main speech, but um, uh, you'll, be seeing mo you'll be seeing more of me at the session. I hope I'll be seeing more of you. Take care. <laughs> Okay, hello everyone, dear participants, uh, honored guests, welcome to the session. Uh, you've briefly seen my co-editor Jeroen already, and I'm sure you will see much more of him and me and our whole media team in the next few days. Anyway, um, I'm going to start probably at the beginning and with a quote. Enjoy your achievements as well as your plans. They are a real possession in the changing fortunes of time. That line is a sentence from the so-called Desiderata, it's a poem written by the American author Max Ehrman in 1921, which is exactly 100 years ago. It took a worldwide pandemic for me to understand some deeper meaning in these lines, especially when said pandemic turned all of our lives upside down and then a bit. I'm sure all of you remember vividly and with various levels of frustration the effects the quarantines and lockdowns had and continue to have on our daily routine. <clears throat> There's not much to recap on that chaos. But true to the quoted line from the poem, over the last couple of months, I've noticed that having plans and distant goals for the future is a real possession and helped me during these changing fortunes of our time to channel my energy and attention into a direction, a direction that would eventually lead into editing Milano IS together with my good friend Jeroen. In some way, this is actually quite ironic um, as working on Milano was often without clear direction for us. It was and still is difficult to find ways to transform the standard in the workings of the media team into a completely digital setting. Uh, Milano IS is the first digital international session in UIP, and there are no tested or right ways to uh, approach everything. Um, whoops, having this session fully digital is completely new territory for the whole media team. Before Corona, media team output was focused mostly, if not exclusively, on photos and videos of people sitting together or interacting with each other in close proximity. It was easy for a media team member to photograph participants in entertaining ways and to gather all the content needed. And the editorial team was able to anticipate workloads, working hours and logistics based on the previous session experience. Yet now, media team members have to learn completely new skill sets May it that be layouting a website, creating podcasts, or in using new online tools to achieve the planned projects. And they're also very dependent on the input they get from all the session participants. However, 
Despite all the uncertainty we were confronted with, we are very glad to be part of such an innovative and resilient team. Katarina, Elena and Rebecca were and are the best support and companions we could have asked for creating such a big and unique event. We are also proud to have such an outstanding and creative media team. Without them, we would not have been able to cover this amazing event. That brings me to my last point already, and it's more a question to all of you out there. I would like to ask you, the participants of Milano IS, to actively shape the session, to enjoy the program, and to take part in the projects of the media team and the, or and the organizing team. The projects of the organizing team. Check your teams for projects and participation opportunities and respond to the media team members, please. They are all very cute and talented people and they're very happy to hear back from you. Especially in this online setting we have right now, we, the media team, are very dependent on your active participation, uh, much more than in normal sessions. We're looking forward to rethink the session today and to shape online sessions in WP tomorrow together with the help of all of you. Thank you very much for your attention. Um, there's actually one more thing. Um, you should have all received a little care package from Milano IS, right? Um, the organizing team led by Elisa Kapabava has moved heaven and earth probably to make these packages happen. And every item within that box has a special meaning or is connected to the session in a certain way. How exactly uh, we would like to show you in this unboxing video, um, I will share with you in a moment. And now I have to figure out how to share. But if you give me a moment, it should work. And yes. And end enable sound. OK. I hope you can hear it. And if not, just scream at the screen. I'm going to hear it. <laughs> video opening the that's, that's, that's one of those boxes. What? Dear Milano participant, as the logistics team we wanted to create a kit that could connect us in these digital days. Bear in mind that everything that you will find is either environmentally sustainable or having a social impact on communities. This jumpsuit official we find and the t-shirt personalized that delegates have are both made in ecological cotton. T-shirts! Be a little big. In our package, we have this 100% organic gluten and lactose free chewing gum with Maya Rainforest taste. So, I hope you guys will definitely like this. Uh, next up is our organic wheat pasta. It's an Italian session and it's about sus sustainability. So, we of course had to have a bio pasta. And next one is our beautiful and elegant pin with uh, our session color. It's a pin. You know, a really nice kitty brooch. Is pasta? Pasta! <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna be doing the Italian night. You'll have also this amazing Colombian and Italian product from Il Sandalo Eco Solidale to make a social impact on communities. And some of you would also have this biscottone from Casa Mica Olbus, who is helping the people in need of housing to stay with their family members during hard times. <laughs> chicken! No, I don't have a chicken, I have oh. a house! <laughs> I have another chicken! What, you have two chickens? Yeah. I have another chicken! Three chickens! <laughs> Colombia al chocolate. Chocolate. If, if it has chocolate, I just, I love it already, so. <laughs> Here we have Taralli, produced by Armando Libera, which uh, is an association that employs ex uh, prisoners. Here we have uh, a beef prop for uh, um, packaging your food foods and making them last longer in the fridge. 
And last but not least, Lavazza Soluble Coffee or Instant Coffee. This is one of the most famous brands in Italy and is also one of our sponsors. Ooh, these wraps! Okay, this is smart. That's like the smartest gift ever. <gasps> c'est trop bon, c'est, c'est les beaux, c'est les... Ah, c'est hyper bon. Italian level 2000. Biscuits. Amma... A mano libera. Lavazza, pronto missimo, intenso. It's always nice to have some great coffee, you know? Italian coffee. Are you, are you serious right now? In the box, you will also find some items for your personal care, uh, such as the toothpaste offered by one of our sponsors, Georganics, as well as water drop, another of our sponsors. Uh, these tablets basically melt into the water, give taste, contain some vitamins and also extract of ginseng that will keep you awake during the session. By Ben and Anna, you will find some natural uh, shampoo tablets and a natural deodorant. Both of these two products also support the cleaning of the oceans apart from being recyclable as all of the other products and then by the humble and co you will find um, a bamboo toothbrush oh this is the sustainability thing yeah oh of course of course natural shampoo tablets whoa so you always stay fresh on your head that's a thing i have no idea that shampoo tablets were a thing. So you always stay fresh on your head, but also underneath your arms. Because, get it? Yeah. Hmm, someone. Oh, oh, it up. Okay. Oh, there's my toothbrush. And for your mouth. Oh, that's so, that's like the complete package. Water drop micro drink. Oh, it's a vitamin C. Oh, okay. How do you say? It's Petske Shetney in Swedish. You know, when you drink not enough water, this is, I believe, stuff you put in your water to, like, be fill your body's salt needs or whatever. Okay. Okay. I see. I see where you're going with this. I see where you're going with this. First, we have this beautiful postcard designed by our media team member, Anait. Then we have a book that is in some way related to sustainability. For example, um, the title of mine says, uh, How Cycling Will Save the World, very appropriate to me. And third, we have this beautiful cup. It comes in green and gray. And well, I hope you like them. You made cups. It's for the coffee. It fits in, I think. It fits, nope. (laughs) No one is too small to make a difference. Uh, Amen to that. The power of resilience, how the best companies manage the unexpected. It's a huge book. The great derangement. Climate Climate change change and the unthinkable. Oh, that's That's perfect for your thesis. We also have stickers! Okay, and with that, I would like to give the word back to our lovely HOs, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, thank you so much. Uh, for this amazing video. It was so lovely to see the faces of the delegates and officials. And now, last but not least, I am honored to pass the floor to Rebecca Smith, an incredible friend and leader and the Milano 2021 session president, president and leader of the academic team. 
Thank you so much, Kate. So I just want to warn everyone, um, this is a very um, meaningful moment for us, um, and I'm quite an emotional person, so it's going to come out. It's coming out already. I've been practicing a lot, but it's just, um, as you can tell, it's something that we've really been preparing for a really long time, um, and so it's really, it's really touching to have it, um, to have it happen and finally come together. So um, I'm going to say a few words. Um, to this is the the last speech of the ceremony, so we're we're wrapping up this opening ceremony, and so this is what I this is what I wanted to share with you. Um, so I wanted to share with you a few words about why it matters that we are here today, and it matters because of everything that we learn in UIP. We learn about ourselves, we learn about others by meeting people from all over Europe with different backgrounds, experiences, and perspectives. We learn how to manage conflict and work together as a group, and really that is a skill that has to be much more widely spread. We learn how to research a current political issue, form an opinion, and have an open dialogue with others about this. And this is a point that I want to elaborate on a little further. I believe it's absolutely fundamental to have spaces for discussion, places where people with different perspectives and opinions can come together to debate in a respectful way to learn how to have an open dialogue with others who might disagree with us, be confronted to other perspectives, and be open to changing our opinions. These are not easy things to do, but we must learn how to do them and spread that to those around us if we want to live in plural, respectful, free societies, especially now in times of polarization, tension, and general distrust. And beyond understanding the world around us better, we learn how to find common ground and to propose solutions. We're not just observing, we're active. And this is particularly important when it comes to our theme, circular sustainability, rethinking today, shaping tomorrow. Sustainability is our key generational challenge. It isn't about being moral or doing the right thing. It's about surviving. It's about having a long-term inclusive and just approach. In many ways, I think that it's about common sense. What we invite do, you during these eight days is to dive deep into the concept of sustainability and be willing to think critically. We invite you to rethink everything, rethink today, and then propose your solutions to shape tomorrow. The topics that we have chosen for this event are 11 different perspectives on this theme, all connected to one of the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. We wanted to have a systemic approach. The topics all aim to address underlying issues, not just symptoms of unsustainability, and propose systemic solutions. Why do we have so much plastic in the seas? What should education be for in the 21st century? What should be the ethical limits to artificial intelligence? How should we address inequalities? Should we rethink currencies? How can we prepare for a changing climate? How can we better integrate citizens into decision-making? And here I'm going to echo the, the panel debate, um, which there are so many points that I, that I agreed with. If anyone says that we are too young to really understand the issues or for our discussions to be taken seriously or to propose meaningful change, I disagree and we should all disagree. Age isn't everything. It doesn't necessarily bring more wisdom or better understanding. Previous generations have not done a great job at sustainability. So I think that we, as the youth, are in our full right and responsibility to question current systems and to propose a way forward. So let us go deep into the issues, rethink our world, not according to how it currently is, but how you think it should be. Let's start from scratch and think, what world do you want to live in? What world should we create? Let's start by imagining it here is the first step to making it happen. I want to end by highlighting that we're all here as volunteers. We're giving our time, we're using our vacation days, we're balancing with our exams to be here because we're passionate about what we do. We believe in its value. Everything that we have created that you see in front of you has been a labor of love. We have done it because we care. And I think that's incredible. <laughs> and that's also why it's, um, it's, um, it's a very meaningful moment. It's been a journey, it's been a challenging journey. With COVID upending all of our carefully crafted plans a few weeks before the event that was supposed to take place in April 2020, but we're still here. We chose to apply the concept of sustainability by showing resilience, by accepting the situation we were in, 
all the challenges and uncertainties and trying to make the best of it. We had to rethink everything from the ground up. Why we were here, what we wanted to achieve, how to make this a meaningful experience. We always went back to our core purpose, to create a high quality environment for peer-to-peer -peer learning and bring some connection in these isolating and challenging times. So I want to thank each and every one of you who's made this possible, our sponsors and partners, the UIP network, the project managers, the editors, the whole team of volunteers behind this, and of course, you, the delegates, who will bring your ideas, perspectives to shape our tomorrow. Please rise for the European Anthem. Dear participants to Milano 2021 International Session, this is for you. And this, this always gets to me. It is my great honor to declare the 92nd International Session of the European Youth Parliament officially open. So thank you all. This concludes our opening ceremony. Thank you all for attending this opening ceremony. Um, next, we're going to have general team building. So we invite all the participants to go to Digital Home General. Thank you again for being here. And we're really excited for the next eight days. <laughs>